Hello, operators, whether you're tier one or tier none, you're welcome here. I was the white motorcycle policeman. So we've we've kind of you've kind of alluded to it. We're going to go real for a bit, and we're going to go deep. We're not going to go real deep. So I want to talk about uh, making a breakfast choice, mm-hmm. and I want to talk briefly about three seconds. Uh, and it's it's not it's a it's a big moment in your life. It's not a defining moment. But you're not you're not a different person. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is still very fresh. Um, so I want to tread very lightly and, and and honor you in that regard. So you have a family that loves to go out to eat. I do. And Liam will behave <laughs> sort of if he gets to go out to eat. Yes. So when you were picking a breakfast place a few months ago, what came into your mind when you were thinking about where to go eat? A few months ago? Oh, no. What, uh, Last. With the dollar. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So, I no, no, you're fine. That was a great lead-in until that point. But that's okay. <laughs> I know. I love you. La- Last October, um, I actually chose Daily Dram, um, which... It's a hipster eatery, by the way. It's really cool, but you got to be a pretty person to go there. <laughs> Their name was... They had a different name at the time, but now it's Daily Jam. So... We go as a family to have breakfast there, and they they had these meals called um, man cakes. Mm. Okay, so that caught my eye, and they had all these different like crazy pancake keep talking concoctions. <laughs> keep okay, talking. there was like stacks with like layers in between, and one caught my eye called the OG. Oh yeah. So the OG is like pancake scrambled eggs, pancake. Home fries, pancake, bacon. Hot link anywhere in there? Pancake, sausage, no. pancake, pancake, fried egg on top. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> so I'm like, I need to see about that. And mainly because a portion of, I think about a dollar or so of that meal went to the 100, the 100 Club of Arizona. And who's the 100 Club of Arizona? So they are a nonprofit organization here in Arizona, obviously, who... Um, Helps officers and their families. Um, statewide, right? Statewide. Uh, when officers have been injured in the line of duty or in case of a line of duty death. And, I mean, they help with any and everything. And we're going to put you. a link up uh, on, of course, all our all our venues, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. A link to the 100 Club and a way that uh, if you can see fit, to, if you want to help there. Um so you gave that dollar, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm going to butcher this Bible verse. So I'm going to just I paraphrase it, dear Lord. Um, I don't mean to do this, but somewhere it says that when you give, it should be returned to you tenfold mm-hmm. or a hundredfold. And it's something about your great house will be overflowing. And Lord, I'm not trying to be a smartass, but there is that. There's that. Oh yeah, ass is in the Bible because Cain <laughs> slayed Abel. Oh, Lord. He slayed Abel with a mule's a jaw a jawbone of an ass. So I can't do it with you. Yeah, oh, I got I got people here <laughs> you in the got studio. Backing up? Yeah, our, our limited audience is now moving away. <laughs> now I'm scared. <laughs> so you gave mm-hmm. the the dollar, and and then um, they gave you some money back. Yes. So the money that I I feel like I got my dollar back and then some because three days after. Uh, I had that breakfast with my family. I was involved. My my zone partner and I were involved in a critical incident. Um, and I have to back up just, just a little bit. The reason why I was at that restaurant that day, I worked Saturday through Tuesday. We were there on a Saturday. The reason why I was not at work that day is because on my way to work, I just broke down in tears because on the 20th of October last year, an officer named um, Antoine Tony was shot and killed in the line of duty at my first department, I remember that. Gwinnett County. Um, young guy, had just turned 30, always wanted to be a police officer. I believe he's originally from California and um, was on a suspicious vehicle call and never got a chance to address the subjects, subjects in the car, from what I understand, before he was, he was basically ambushed. Um, I have a lot, like you said, of close friends who are still at Gwinnett, and they were affected by that deeply. And I received so many phone calls 
just from them needing to talk through it. Like I said, I've always kind of been right. that person. And me checking on people. And then the more I'm calling, the more I'm finding out that these people are a part of, like, the command post and this and that and SWAT. And, you know, so they're there. They're in it. And it's hard for me because I like to help. And my way of helping is being right beside you to, for you know, to go through it with you. And I'm, like, 18, 1900 miles away. Right. So... Just, I think, from talking to everybody, and, you know, I did some emotional cutting, if you will, by watching the funeral procession. I listened to his last, the last call they put out for him, um, and it was rough. It was rough because, you know, uh, Gwinnett County has not changed their uniforms since I left there mm. in 2008. So when I saw his picture you know, as a young black officer, I see myself because right. I wore that uniform. You know, and like the story I was telling before, for me to just have kind of stumbled into law enforcement, and this is all he's ever wanted to do, I was angry. I was very angry because I was like, this, this, isn't, this isn't fair. Um, so I just broke down crying on the way to work. I talked to a sergeant. He helped me kind of talk through some things, and he's like, you know what? Go home and spend time with your family today. And so I did that. Me and my family get to, don't get to be together all in one place all the time because my husband works at night. And so I was like, you know what? We're going to go. Everybody's going to go eat breakfast. So that's how we ended up there um, at breakfast that day. And Sunday I didn't go in because I just wasn't there mentally just yet. Which is a smart thing to do. I think yeah. a lot of people go to work in that line of work who mm -hmm. shouldn't be mm -hmm. if they've got stuff going on. Exactly. And it should be okay Take a mental health day. Thank There's you. nothing wrong with that because we have, as police officers, we have to be clear and ready to go. Exactly. So I took my two days. Um, I walk into work that Monday. I'm having a conversation with um, one of my close friends at work who she was also involved in a critical incident. So I, we make sure to check in with each other. She noticed I wasn't there for two days. And she's like, hey, what's going on? So I tell her. And I'm like, this is not fair. Like, this is, you know. This is not fair. And let me pause real quick. I tell people, whatever you ask the universe for, whatever you ask God for, whatever it is you believe in, please be specific. Because yes. I had been complaining about not getting to spend enough time with my family, having working mom guilt. You know, I'm just, I'm, I was angry about Officer Tony's death and how it wasn't fair that, you know, I said, I've been dodging the proverbial bullet, quote, you know, air quotes, for 15 years and he's been on the job a short amount of time, and, and that's it. He didn't get a second chance. So fast forward, six hours later, I'm being shot. So it was one of those things of, wow, okay. I forgot to put some bullet points in what I was asking, exactly. asking for. So um, as far as the call goes, because I, I can't give, like, no, you, detail, you, detail, but just short. In short, we were there to serve order of protection due to a domestic violence situation. So we have the domestic violence component, and this is Domestic Violence Month as well. Um, and the, the gentleman, the boyfriend, was not going for it. Um, I was hit three times, and my partner was hit once. Um, the girlfriend did not get harmed at all because she was there with us and the shooting itself I tell people is about three to three and a half seconds that's real seconds that's real time real yeah. seconds like it's 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 quick like to the point where when I watch the body cam I have to slow it down to even remember what's going on um, so I was struck in my right forearm and I am right-handed and I was also struck in my upper left arm, and uh, the last bullet, as I was outside, um, like running out of the door, I got struck in my back, but my vest uh, Who made caught that one. Why did you, you ask me that question? Because I don't remember. Okay, because th they want to know. <laughs> I don't we'll, remember. I'll okay. have to get back to you on that. <laughs> well, that's more than I expected you to share, but i, yeah. I got to share about that day for me. Yes. I've known, we've, we've figured out 11 years, I was at work. Fighting communism, and I have lots of friends. One of them's here in the room who are scanner people. Mm -hmm. And the best part about living in the valley, as long as I have, and being a people person, is you know a lot of people. So the first text I get is uh, PD off, temp PD officer shot. Okay, so I'm still working. Came back, two female 
Tempe PD officers shot. Well, you're one that I know, and I knew you had a female partner. So you were talking about you called Gwinnett when the thing the, that event was still dynamic. Mm-hmm. I don't do that because I don't want to be the one whose phone rings when the guy's working this because you know, it's happened. Mm-hmm. I've seen SWAT guys' phones go off. So I thought I waited what I thought was an appropriate time. And all these years, you've never not responded to a text from me. So I sent you a simple one. Are you code four? And you didn't answer. Mm. So I knew. Mm. I mean, I said, let's give it an hour, and I knew at that point. Uh, and you're not the first, and you better be the last, because I am old. I have a poor diet. I'm not in the best of health. You aged me 10 years, and I didn't come that night because it was, I just want, I knew you, your, the Tempe family was there, and I knew your family was gathered. And the next day, I thought I had it together, and the hospital that, the trauma center uh, is about four minutes from my house, and they are so good to first responders. You, you even those visiting first responders. You know, if you, I went up and asked for Tactical Plus as model, they tell me room six hundred four. When you say your name, a volunteer takes you, mm-hmm. gets you up there. And when I walked, I you know you never know what to expect because the media. This is something that one of my pet peeves. The media will say. Non-life-threatening event. But, you know, these things can be career-threatening events. Yeah. This is your right arm. This is your back. This is your leg. Where You know, these can be career-altering events. Yes, we're glad that your life was spared, but this is a, a career for a person. And so that's your big fear and your big worry. So I come up. I'm doing my deep breathing. I'm trying to center. I'm trying to bring up my inner clown because I know we're going to goof a little mm-hmm. bit. And I turn that corner, and, of course, your son Liam was there, and every... I mean, the command staff from Paradise Valley, the young man who's now a sergeant, was there. Nigel. This yep. room is full of police. And you looked up, and you took over. You became the adult in that situation. <laughs> I was going to come in there with the words of wisdom. And you saw my what was going on with me, and you had me come over. And with all that going on, you had the we hugged, and that, that wound in your left shoulder was fresh. still had the Band-Aids on it. And that was a hug that was... Uh, it was good for me, and I hope it was good for you. And we pulled away, and you introduced me to everybody. And Liam mm-hmm. had his stethoscope, <laughs> and he decided I need an exam. That's right. So we got over on the floor, and we sat, and I got my thorough medical exam, and he had some great diet recommendations for me. I didn't know that uh, <laughs> chicken fingers were good for you. <laughs> and broccoli. And broccoli. He wanted me to have broccoli. <laughs> and we had a good time. We went through his backpack, looked at everything he brought use your hand the way you want to and I was in a cast for a short amount of time and you know I tell people two things about my injury here um, is I said can I curse on here absolutely okay um, <laughs> I was holding back I've been holding back Me too. <laughs>